Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm just working around the shop doing some routine maintenance and some updates, uh, but I've got a couple of tips and techniques on my mind that I want to show you before I forget. So let's get into doing those. Oh, before I forget, I have an announcement. I'll do that later on in the video. You'll want to check that out. Let's get on with the first tip for starters. <laughs> A few weeks ago, I was watching Tamara from 3x3 Custom. She did a really good video on all the different ways that you can make doweling. And one of the ways that she showed was using the router. And that's my favorite way of making doweling. And you know, when we think of making doweling, we often think that if you're making a dowel, you need to start off with little pieces of wood. And that's not the case. In fact, whenever I'm thinking of making anything small, I always start thinking big. Like where is that going to come from to begin with? And how can I start big and work small? And making doweling on the router is the perfect way of showing that. So let me show you what we start off with. The straightest edge the straightest grain of wood you can get because doweling uh, is always the, be <laughs> the best wood you can find. If you look in the hardware store, you'll notice that the doweling is always perfect grain. So that's where we're going to start off with. And I've already set a router bit in my router table. So let me show you how we do this. So there's the router bit that I'm using and of course it's a quarter round bit and it's a three quarter inch length and that means that in order to make a three quarter inch dowel I need to use some stock that's three quarters of an inch thick and that's exactly what I'm using on this one. Now this piece of wood that I'm using is two inches wide three quarters of an inch thick and it's about 30 inches long. I'm going to run it through one way, then I'm going to flip it over and do the other side and then I'm going to stop. So there's what I've started off with and you can see that it's round on one side and you could actually take and cut that off if you were looking for a, a, a little bit of molding that you wanted to use as a detail piece on furniture. But I'm going to take this to my table saw because now I do have to trim this down because I can't make doweling uh, without cutting this. So let's go over to the table saw. And I just want that... I don't even want it touching the blade. I just want a, just a tiny bit of air between them. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now I have a half round piece of wood and I'm going to run it through again. And because I'm using these paddles, it's not going to go anywhere and I can put it on the table or I can put it up there. It doesn't matter. Either one of them are safe to use. So I actually like doing it this way and that's how I'm going to run it. Then I'm going to stop when I do this second run. Well, now I have a teardrop shape and it's been pretty easy to this point. And what I want to do now is I want to put the teardrop right in the corner and I'm going to run that through just like that and watch what comes out the end. Well, there's my dowel, and you know what? I can make this as long as I want, and because it was a three-quarter inch uh, round over bit, then it gives me a three-quarter inch piece of dowel. And I could make multiples of these if I wanted. I could use this side, run this side through, get the half round on this side, same on this side, cut those off on the table saw, come back and redo it. So you could make lots and lots of doweling if you needed to do that. And any size you want, any size, any length you want. Just that easy by starting with larger pieces of wood. And here's a really easy project where you start large and work small. And it's just a phone 
cable holder or camera cables. Um, and I make lots of these and give them away. I make them in long strips and cut them off whatever size I want. Uh, drill a couple holes in case people want to put some screw holes in the back. You can put double-sided tape on the back of them and hang them on things. They're really handy, but they're really easy to make. And you start with a larger piece of wood. So let's go over to the table saw and I'll show you how I make these. Now here's a situation where we start big and work smaller and smaller. Now the next thing to do is to cut the little lip off the side of this and typically the easiest way to do that is to measure it and do it this way. But the problem with doing it this way is you're going to get kicked back. This little piece is going to kick back there. And that's okay as long as you know that it's going to be coming back at you. Um, you can plan for it, but you can do it another way too. And that is to put it open like this and reset it up by hand, which is what I'm doing and just sort of, in this case, I'm just eyeballing it. And I need to drop my blade down a little bit as well to there and now when that comes off it's just going to fall off the side. There we go and that's just how easy that is. The last thing is and I'm still working smaller and smaller is is to cut this last little piece off and I'm going to do that now. There we go, and there's the carcass. Um, I still need to cut slots in there. And you could do that on the table saw, no reason you couldn't. And you've got good support here with a miter, uh, miter gauge. Uh, I just like to do it on the band saw. I just like the, the, the way I can adjust the size of the slots a little bit easier. So, um, But that's just how easy that is, and we start big and work small. Well, I guess now is as good a time as any for a quick announcement. Um, for anybody who's going to be around the Kansas City area uh, around mid-January, I've decided that I'm going to be attending uh, that wood show this year. Last year I was in Atlanta. This year I want to go to Kansas City. Um, so if you're going to be around there, um, I'll be at the show um, Friday and Saturday and possibly Sunday, but Friday and Saturday for sure. Uh, oh, and while I'm in the neighborhood, the Lee's Summit Woodworkers Guild has uh, asked me to speak at their January meeting. So I'm going to be there too. Uh, if you're around, uh, guests are welcome. And uh, of course the details I'll put in the article and the link for that article is going to be in the description box. So hopefully we'll get to see you there. I had an email from Brad not long ago and Brad's talking about using a shooting board. Now a shooting board, if you're not familiar with it, typically you would use your plane and it's for straightening up the ends of wood, something like that. Um, in, and of course you can use it for angles if, if you've got angles, like if you're doing picture frames, for example, and you need to clean up the ends. And a shooting board is just a piece of wood. Uh, it hooks on the edge of your workbench like that. And the purpose of it is that you can set either an a straight across member piece which I have attached here or you can use angles you can attach an angled piece on here if you want to do angles and the purpose of it of course is to straighten up your wood and you need a super sharp blade on your on your plane and when you move that back and forth like that, I can tell mine is not quite sharp enough just by the sound of it. Yeah, it doesn't sound quite right. And you just keep going across like that and you can see the pieces coming out here. Now, the reason I can tell it's not quite sharp, there's some minute lines on there and that tells me that my blade is not quite sharp enough for doing this. But look, um, you don't need to use a plane. If you have a plane and you know how to sharpen it, then you're golden. But planes are expensive, sharpening stones are expensive, takes a lot of time to keep that tuned up, and sometimes you just need to do something quickly. And Brad suggests why not just use a block of wood with sandpaper on it? It works just as well. And in his case, he uses thumbtacks. He tacks it down. I don't have some thumbtacks, but I just use staples on it. 
And you know what? You can do the same thing and you can use different grits of wood, uh, sandpaper and all you need to do is run that along and you know what? It does, it does an amazingly good job and you don't need expensive planes and sharpening tools and if you only need to do something once in a while, this is a great way of being able to sort of emulate a shooting board that with your plane and actually using sandpaper to do the same thing. You don't have to sharpen it um, and it does just a fantastic job. So that's a great idea, Brad. Thanks for that. Well, that concludes my video for today. Um, some new techniques and some new ways of doing things. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.